Okay then, so this is a video on M2, conducting a feasibility study for one of your chosen development projects. This is going to be a biggie, and so I would recommend that in the next 8 or 9 minutes you pause this video, you complete it, and then you move on. Uh, it's not going to be a, a stop by stop section uh, guidance of an hour long video this, it's going to just be 8 or 9 minutes capping what is this feasibility study. So. This is an extension to P3. In P3 you've gone through five different possible projects and you should have clearly identified two that were the best and most suitable or the ones that you liked the most. Okay, And it's one of those two that you need to do this feasibility study on. You need to present this feasibility study as a report. It's going to be quite lengthy uh, and it needs to be really, really detailed. Essentially, this is going to be the key to your client choosing you over a competitor uh, for this project. Now then, let's have a look what it has to include. If you've already done Unit 6, it's not as bad as that feasibility study. If you haven't done Unit 6, that feasibility study is, is really tough and that's yet to come. Uh, but see this as a opportunity to learn about what a feasibility study is. So you need to identify new opportunities for your client and you should have done that through P2, P3, M2, which is this, and D1. You need to do an evaluation and analysis of the proposed concept solution and what it is actually meant to do, what are the benefits and how you're going to do this feasibly. How is this going to be feasible to complete? All right? Remember, feasibility is not stating the obvious. If somebody said, oh, okay, I'd like to uh, put a swimming pool on my roof, you might go, that's not really feasible. But yet, last week in London, uh, a swimming pool was opened spanning two skyscrapers. So it is feasible, it's just it might not be feasible within certain aspects of constraints or the feasibility uh, of economy. It's very, very expensive to do it, so for some it wouldn't be feasible, but for others it would. Now for your client here, you don't have a time frame to complete this by, and you don't have any uh, budgeting uh, to do. So that makes this feasibility study quite easy. Okay. So, I'm going to talk through each of these feasibility studies on the next slide, but you need to do a section on technological, on economic, scheduling, operational, legal, and then constraints and limitations. Once you've done those, uh, you need to look at an evaluation of alternative proposals. So you need to take your other second choice and say how that would have failed feasibility of one of the above and why. Then you need to do a little bit of market assessment and tell me what's currently out there. You need to give me three or four, maybe five options of what's out there that you could use for your solution and which one you prefer or will be choosing and why. And how you will assess the success of the implementation uh, after it's completed. So how are you going to find that this product is has been a success? What are you going to do to measure success? And you need to just give a recommendation. And then at the end you need to uh, conclude everything that's been written above and then you need to say whether or not you think it is feasible to progress with the project. You need to progress with this project else you're going to fail your coursework. So don't say, oh, actually, now I've done this, I think that I probably shouldn't do this, it's very expensive. You will just stop your coursework right here and you will therefore not get higher than a merit. So don't do that. You want to pass this feasibility and there's no reason why you shouldn't. So the structure is as follows, and there's just a few things that I want you to remember. Number one, the size of your project. Don't make this too hard for yourself. I haven't, and Gatwick Sales Association, haven't stipulated any size of the project uh, directly. They haven't said, oh, I want this in all hotels. So if you want to just put this in 10 rooms in one hotel as a, as a starting point, fine. If you want to put it in one room in every hotel, fine. There's no predetermined room. What I wouldn't advise is that you go for all... 2,550 rooms across 22 hotels uh, because suddenly it becomes a very, very big job and it becomes quite difficult and you don't get any extra merit for uh, doing a big project. Also, don't con your way through this. You're not trying to sell me this product. You're not going to get some sort of uh, <coughs> uh, commission for this. Uh, you need to be truthful and you need to do your research and I need to be able to see it. So what's the structure going to be like? Well, you need to have an introduction to the study. What are you going to discuss? And uh, implementation and explanation about the proposed solution, its size. That is where I need to get the gist of the overall project. So I'm going to install city dashboards in 10 rooms across these five hotels. The five hotels will be the following. The reason why I've chosen these are they will go into these rooms because, and that's what the introduction needs to be. 
Next on the list is technological feasibility. What technology is needed, both physical and logical technology? What technology, if any, can be repurposed? Remember, this is a part of a requirement from the Gatwick Hotels Association that they don't want you to reinvent the wheel. So if you think that they've already got some technology, like an internet service provider or Category 5 cabling in every room, then don't reinstall it, just use what they've got, okay? And you can make some degree of assumption there, but you need to state your degree of assumption. Next is economic feasibility. So this is the cost of the products, the cost of the implementation, including wages, labor, the cost of upkeep, the cost of rooms off sale due to implementation. Uh, and you could consider the check-in versus check-out time. If it's a very quick installation, you might not need to take any rooms off sale. But if you need to do a put a TV bracket on a wall, install the TV, do an update, get it working, and you need a room off sale for the day, you need to factor in every room's average price as part of the economic feasibility and I need to be able to see that. So the easiest way to do that is to go to booking.com or Trivago or uh, TripAdvisor and look for three different dates, one midweek, one at the weekend and one random date. Get the price for the room that you want to install it in, work out an average and then times that by the number of rooms that you want and that will give you a cost of rooms off sale to install what you want to do. Scheduling, there is no fixed time frame. You need to factor in the install, training, and tracking of implementation. It can be presented in a Gantt chart, this, but what I would say is that you need to also consider order time, shipping time, getting into the UK. We've seen that across the, the country in the last year, especially with COVID and Brexit and things like that, that ordering things in from the continent and from further afield is really, really problematic, and then things aren't getting into us as quickly as they used to. So you need to build that into the scheduling. You want to have all of this installed into your target, your key areas within six months so that you can uh, logically get a good data set from the success of it. If you do it over six, longer than six months, then the original ones may need replacing. You may have already started to find issues with the original ones, which will then impact the later ones, and it makes the data uh, quite obscure and quite difficult to track success. Operational. Who will be managing the new implementation? Will they be paid to do so? Has that been considered in the economic cost and are you adding to their workload? Because remember it was said that they don't want to add to workload. You can't simply say, oh, this receptionist is going to manage this. They need training. That needs paying for. They also need to be taken off their other job. Uh, say they do 42 hours a week. They need to be given four hours a week to manage this. That means those four hours need to be covered by somebody else and therefore that's part of the economic that you need to consider. So the operational and the economic kind of go hand in hand. Uh, legal impacts. Are you taking data from the uh, the actual client? Uh, are you going to be using that data uh, effectively and in line with GDPR? So you need to mention that. Are you using other companies' logos, etc.? So do you need to consider uh, the Copyright Designs and Patents Act? And are you going to be using other companies' logos and things like that? Because if you are, that's that's really a big thing that you need to consider, especially if you're doing a city dashboard. If you're going to have Category 5 ports in every room where somebody could just plug in their, their computer and get into your network, you need to consider the Computer Misuse Act and methods in which you can mitigate against that. Then, like I said previously, you need to have a little section on how this is, is more feasible than another option. So that could be your second choice option from P3. You need to do a little bit of market assessment where you say, OK, I'm going to install smart locks and these are five smart locks. Here are the pros and cons and then clearly say which one you're choosing and why. And then you need results and clear, a clear conclusion as to whether to proceed or not. I hope that that's been clear and that it's given you a bit of a more idea about how to structure M2 and you've got some, some basis now to go and do that work. If you've got any questions, as always, please ask.